God. This little guy is called a nutria. So there's one. There's one we got trying to get away. Two, right three, now. four, five, and six. Six. Six live nutria. How old do you think these are? A few days. A few days. Really? Yeah. They're not old for sure. Yeah. And look how cute that is. There's nothing wrong with a few nutria. We just got a few million too many. Nutria are an invasive species of rodent in Louisiana. They were first brought here from South America in the 30s as a source of fur. That's some big teeth. <laughs> but then in the late 80s, people stopped buying fur, leaving the nutria to breed out of control. And pretty soon, they started wrecking the environment. How much of the damage that's happening to Louisiana's wetlands is because of nutria? Nutria come in last behind natural wetland loss, the levees on the river, oil and gas canals, but then I think it's Nutra next. So I, it, it's enough for us to worry about, I think. That's the stuff they want right there. There are around 3 million acres of marshland in Louisiana, and state officials estimate that about 14,000 were damaged by Nutria last year. And a little over 6% of that has already turned into open water. That's almost 700 football fields worth of land that's just gone. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah. man. Damn. Yeah, so yeah, they, they ate too much of that. That's what a few too many Nutra do to the marsh. Okay, I get your point. See, like that, a Nutra was right here. See how that grass is ate down? Yeah, how it's kind of folded over like that? Yeah, they make their little homes, and that's where they sit and they'll eat at. Walter Heathcock was born and raised on this land. He says he's lost hundreds of acres over the years, and he blames some of that on Nutria. No, 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 no. Got him. Walter goes out hunting for fun all the time. But when he hunts Nutria, he says he's protecting his land. As far as the state of Louisiana is concerned, Walter's also doing a public service. Since 2002, the state's had a bounty program in place with the goal of killing 400,000 nutria per year. But for the past three years, they've only averaged about half that. So for this year's hunting season, the state has upped the bounty from $5 per dead nutria to $6. Got his ass. Golly, what happened to that one? Little six dollar bills just running around out here. Feeling pretty good about that? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Walter doesn't do this for the money, but if you wanted, you could make a living off of this. Last year, one hunter made fifty-five thousand dollars off of Nutria. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six times ten. Sixty, 60 bucks. bucks. Once you cut these tails up, how do you collect the money? Um, they have collection sites. So you take all your tails that you have, you go up there, you show them your license, they'll write it down and you'll receive a check in the mail. Most people just turn in the tails and throw the bodies away. Grab that end, Dex. Grab this end? Grab that end. I'm gonna play tug of war. But Nutria are actually edible. Come on, man. Hold pull. on, off balance. Hold on, you pull it. So we skinned a couple, cleaned them up, and then took the meat to the most famous Nutria chef in the world. And off to the pot it goes. All right, Dexter, you brought me some, uh, some beautiful Nutria here. Philippe Parola has made an entire career out of getting people to eat exotic animals, especially invasive species. And since 1994, he's been working with the state government to promote eating Nutria meat. But federal regulations make it pretty hard for restaurants to sell Nutria. Chef Philippe's hoping to get that changed. What do you taste like? Kind of like pork. A little bit it's pork, pork and from, turkey from, is, is something like it's that. It's a yeah. cross from, you know, a lot of different things, but you know what they said, everything tastes like chicken. <laughs> I don't know if it tastes like chicken. It's good though. <laughs> Chef Philippe knows it'll be a challenge to get city folks past the idea of eating a big swamp rat. Look at the French when they come up with a snail, escargot. And I think the first guy that said, look, take this, is, is, is a snail and I just prepare. You're gonna look at him and said, are you out of your mind? But with the marketing, 
that has been ongoing for all those years with a snail. Snail is a delicacy. So you, your idea is kind of to make Nutria fine dining. What, what needs to be done is a chef with a white coat. They need to send a message because we are the one who deal with food. And when they serve it, guess what? The public don't ask any question. What kind of reaction do people have to this program where, you know, people are getting paid money to kill animals? I can't speak for other people. I just tell you that I wish it wasn't, I wish I didn't think it was necessary. Yeah, but now we've got this program going, they're less of a problem. You know, we're managing it. So it's working? It's working, yeah. I wouldn't want to give this program up because I think it'd take about five years, we'd see a lot of problems again. Let's just maintain this as best we can. We can get more alligators, we can get more ducks, we can get more egrets, cleaner water, just by killing a few nutria. Let's kill a few nutria. <laughs>